Do you sometimes feel like there's so many things to explore and to learn in this world and so little time to do it in? At work, are you always thinking about other projects that you couldn't be working on except for your current project? Do you have uncontrollable urges to start side projects? Do you have itches that you need to scratch to try something new? At school, does your mind wander about all the things that you could be learning, except for the things that you're actually learning in the class that you're sitting in? Seems like it's ringing a bell. <laughs> if so, you, like me, might have a problem. Today, I'm here to come clean. I'm here to admit something that's taking me years to fully accept about myself. My name is LP Maurice, and I have a curiosity problem. <laughs> it actually dates way back, so 15 years ago. That's when it started. That's when I really just started to follow my curiosity. And mysteriously, unexpected things started to happen in my life. So it goes back to high school. I was studying all sorts of classes in my regular curriculum, and I really fell in love with this book called Invisible Man, a book that I think Martin Gauthier from Sidley also probably would like. <laughs> the book was amazing. It was about race relations and personal identity, and I just fell in love with it, and I wanted to make a website about the book. So I actually learned how to code HTML outside of my regular classes instead of doing my homework. Um, and when summer came, I actually kept on making websites. And I ended up starting a company that I would manage for about eight years to make websites and develop software. All because I learned HTML and all because of this book. Fast forward a few years, I was still studying and I was learning about marketing and business and all this other great stuff. But I was really growing fascinated with all of these stories I was hearing from young entrepreneurs starting tech companies. This was one year after Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook at Harvard. So I spoke to one of my professors, and I was telling him, wow, these stories are fascinating. And he agreed to co-author these two case studies with me for the Harvard uh, Business School Publishing Unit. And so instead of doing my, uh, the, the case studies were about Pandora and Twitter, which were two young tech companies that were not very well known at the time. So instead of doing my coursework, I was actually um, doing all of this research for these case studies and, and writing and conducting interviews and even flew to San Francisco to meet the founder of these companies instead of doing my, the, what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> um, but again, summer came, and when it was time to graduate, I actually decided to move to San Francisco to follow this interest because, that I had developed because of these two case studies. I ended up finding a job at Yahoo and then at LinkedIn and settled there for a few years. Again, all because of these case studies. And fast forward to today. So today I'm an entrepreneur and I manage a, a travel startup with about 20 employees here in Montreal. But I still find time to follow this curiosity. About a year ago, I grew really interested by meeting other entrepreneurs from the Montreal scene that were doing the same thing that I was doing, starting up a small business. So I started this club called Entrepreneurs Anonymous with a few of my friends. And it grew from about five people to about 150 different founders of different startup companies. And it was just amazing. Because I could connect with other people who were like me, share my story, and also I made new friends. So as a side project, it was super fulfilling. But when you look at these three examples, and there are 100 others, it just seems like a never-ending chain of me not doing the main thing that I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and that's when I came across this article. So this is an article about Google's 20% time. So Google famously offers 20% time to all of their engineers to work on any project of their choice, as long as it's somehow related to Google. And it's an awesome program. It's not an official policy, but it's something that's part of their internal culture. And that's when it struck me. Maybe all these years I didn't really have a problem. I was just doing 20% time, like the big kids at Google. So that's really how I started to rationalize it to myself and justify it and start accepting what I've been doing for all of these years. I was basically using these 20% side projects as a way 
to channel my, my creativity and my curiosity into something positive. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Imagine each one of us, of, of us in this room had 20% of our time to work on a side project of our choice. If we did, what would you choose to work on? And better yet, what if the organizations that we were a part of, our companies, our schools, our hospitals, and all the other types of organizations we were a part of, actually endorsed it and supported this? Imagine all the amazing things that we would learn. So it actually turns out that a lot of companies do this already. So Innovator 3M has been doing this since the 1940s, giving 15% of, of the time to workers to work on any project of their choice. And then HP gives 10% since the 1960s. And as I mentioned before, Google gives 20% in the last decade to all of their engineers. But more interestingly, recently in 2012, Apple and LinkedIn started giving paid sabbatical time to their workers uh, to, so they can, they can work on their own uh, side projects and scratch an itch that they had. So from two weeks all the way to 90 days. So it seems like there's definitely some kind of a movement around giving more flexibility to their workers. And it's given some amazing results. So here you have Gmail, the posted, and HTML. And three products that are used by millions of people the world over every single day. And what they have in common is they actually started out as someone's 20% time project in an organization that actually supported and endorsed 20% time. So namely Google, uh, 3M, and HP. And it turns out it also makes a lot of sense, and there's a lot of good reasons why organizations should be doing this and encouraging it. For the organization, it's access to innovation and new ideas. For the individual, it's creative freedom and autonomy and all these great things. So it's, it's definitely a win-win contract for both people. And organizations, they know that talent these days is more mobile than it's ever been. So if they want to have a chance to actually retain their workers, they need to make them happy. And 20% projects, believe me, they make you happy. They're, they're challenging and they're exciting, and they also have all these awesome side benefits like fostering collaboration and, and making better teams. So they're, they're great. So if you think about what a 20% project actually is, this is the definition that I came up with. It's something that you're doing aside from your main objective or job because you think it's interesting. And also, without really knowing what the outcome will be. So there's definitely some kind of a risk component there, which I like to think about as an adventure component. That's another thing. Um, and in an organization also, you should also find uh, some kind of a benefit for the, for, the, for the project, for the organization, and ideally would be endorsed and approved by the company. So it could be anything. It could be starting a blog, or going to a conference like this one, or even hosting a conference. Or if you're technical, it could be writing an open source um, module of code. It could be any of these things. So, I see the blank looks in your face, and you're like, wow, that sounds amazing. I just, I wish I had that. But there's only one little problem. I, I don't work at a company like Google, or any of these tech companies, for, for that matter. It turns out that's okay. You can actually start creating 20% time in your own work week right now. And it's actually pretty easy, because you don't have the criteria number two and three that you need to fit inside some neat scope of some other organization. You can actually pretty much do what you want and it could give some pretty amazing results. So let's look at a few examples of people who have actually managed to do this successfully. So in the tech world, we have Jack Dorsey and Bill Gates. So Jack Dorsey was an engineer at Odeo, which was an early podcasting company, but he was always fascinated by this dispatching technology for couriers and ambulances. So as he was an engineer for Odeo, he was also building this system to broadcast these short status updates to the world. And as the fortunes of Odeo reversed, and the company was forced to pivot, they actually pivoted to this 20% time idea that Jack had been working on in the last few months. And that co company became Twitter. And Twitter now has 500 million users, and this changed social media and journalism forever. And on the other side, you have Bill Gates. And Bill Gates, probably one of the busiest men in the world, you know, managing 100,000 employees at, at Microsoft. He still found time to invest in something he really was fascinated by, and that's philanthropy. So he ended up founding the Gates Foundation and being a major player, investing in education and health projects around the world with an endowment that's now over $35 billion. 
So what I like about these two stories is that they remind us that the 20% project starts small, but it can lead to something much bigger. For Jack, it was a whole new company, and for Bill, it was a whole new career. 20% time is also good for students. So Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg started off as students, and Steve was doing his regular curriculum classes and finding classes kind of boring and sleeping on the floor of his friend's dorm room. But in his spare time, he was actually going to these creative classes, including th this one on Japanese calligraphy. And because of that, a few, a few years later, when Apple launched the Mac, they actually included these beautiful fonts and typefaces, all because he went to this single Japanese calligraphy class. Mark Zuckerberg, instead of doing his regular classes, he became fascinated by the school's student directory and this idea he could post pictures online with photos and compare all the inhabitants of the dorms on campus. He actually left Harvard and started the company, now has a billion users. So what I like about both of these stories is that the 20% time is really someone just like following their curiosity and something they found interesting and the fact that that can have a major impact on your career and your work for many years to come after. But 20% time is not only for students and techies. Let's just look at Thomas Keller, one of the most prolific chefs in the world, owner of French Laundry, which is considered by many as one of the best restaurants in the world, so definitely a fine dining establishment. So he challenged his team of, of, of folks to start a very, very simple restaurant called Ad Hoc. It was almost like a pop-up restaurant for the summer. So very simple food, simple ingredients, and the goal was to reconnect with what it was to prepare food for, for, for a family. And lo and behold, it actually became a huge success and created a whole new business line for him. On the other side, you have Tina Roth Eisenberg, very well-respected designer. So she owns her own boutique called uh, Swiss Miss, but she actually on the side has many side projects. So one of them is Creative Mornings, which is a lecture series at the breakfast time for designers to learn about uh, new issues. And it's spread to more than 50 cities, which is really impressive for a side project. And her other side project is Tatly, which is a website for removable tattoos. And she had this idea from her daughter, because her daughter was, basically came to her and was trying to apply a removable tattoo, and she's like, wow, these are so poorly designed and, and so, poor, so poor quality. And she started a website that became a side business, that's, and now it's, it's, it's a pretty famous business. So what I like about these two case studies when I combined them is really that these 20% projects started out as just a creative outlet, but really it became a way for these two folks to renew their inspiration with their 80% job. And 20% time is not just for awesome uh, international people. There's also a lot of it happening right here in Montreal. So these are two good examples. On one hand, you have GF Bouchard, who's the founder of Sidley, which is an ad agency who does work for a lot of big clients and you know, has uh, offices in five countries but he still had this idea. He was fascinated with this idea that he could create a conference to showcase all of Montreal's creativity to the rest of the world. And C2 Montreal was born. And C2 Montreal was just this week, and it's brought into the city people like Richard Branson, and last year, like Francis Ford Coppola. And it's generated millions of dollars of commercial transactions for the participants of the conference, but also for the city. On the other side, you have J.S. Colmaillet, who is a venture capitalist at a US-based firm called Vantage Point. But in the back of his head, he was thinking, I would love to create a seed fund in Montreal to help entrepreneurs. So he actually connected with a few other local investors and started Montreal Startup. The interesting thing about that is that that morphed into Real Ventures, which now funds about 50 different startups here in Montreal, and also is a pretty active player in the Notman House community for the web, and also the Founder Fuel Startup Accelerator. So what I like about these two stories is that the 20% project starts very personal. But after that, it could give this ripple effect of positive outcomes for the community and the city. So now you're thinking, that's awesome, great examples, but my schedule, totally booked. No way I can do this in my schedule. So let's actually take a closer look at how you could actually do this in your own schedule. So if you're working a 40-hour work week, 20% um, is about eight hours. So eight hours, you can do that in one day on Friday if you wanted to, or you could spread it in regular intervals, um, you know, regular planned intervals over the week, or you could do the way I do it, which is basically ad hoc. 
I take one or two hours here and there as it goes to work on the side projects, because I can't really plan for it. That said, I really like to work on the Friday afternoons because the business is slower and I can really, really kind of deep dive on my side projects. And if you can't commit to it on a weekly basis, check out these other formulas, monthly, yearly, and career. So if you do a week out of a month, that's 25% time. That's amazing. And keep in mind, this isn't vacation time. This is time that you're investing in these creative side projects that could give you something much bigger later. And now you're like, wow, like 20% time, amazing idea, but I have all these other things I need to deal with, like family, work, friends, health, hobbies, etc. And a lot of people think about 20% time like this. It's like an additional layer of time in addition to your work week that you're spending, and that's spilling over to the other buckets that you definitely need to allocate time to as well. That's not how I think it. I think about more 20% time like this, like something that I actually bake into my work week. I actually allocate quality hours of my work week to do this stuff. So it doesn't really feel like a chore that there's something I need to do at the end of my day when I'm tired. It's something that I really look forward to. So I keep really focused in my 80% time so I don't make sure that I miss that 20% 20, 20 time that I like that much. So I don't want to leave you thinking that this is a super exact science of any sorts. It's really something that you need to play with and experiment with, both in terms of the types of projects that you might want to be doing with this 20% time, but also how you fit in your schedule. But if you're thinking about do it, I would say just do it. And don't worry about the outcomes too early. This is one of my favorite cartoons ever. It's about success. And a lot of people think that success is a really like nice upward uh, sloping line, but it's not. It's really more of a scribble or a maze. So the message here is don't be afraid to be a bit random or a bit messy or to venture off the beaten path because you never really know where that path will lead you. And as Steve Jobs reminded us a few years ago, very wisely, you can only connect the dots looking back. So basically, the best thing that we can do right here in the present is to follow our passions and to follow our hearts and to follow our curiosity and trust somehow that it all makes sense later. <laughs> I want to leave you with these two final promises. The first one is we've decided at my startup to adopt 20% time this summer. So very courageously, we will be giving 20% time to all of our 20 employees so that they can work on any project they want over the summer. So when I was preparing this talk, I was speaking to my co-founder, Fred, and I was telling him, you know, 20% time, amazing. Like for me, for all these other people. And he was like, that's great. Then why aren't we giving it to the rest of the people in the company? And he was totally right. And when you're in a startup, you have this unique luxury of being able to create the work culture that you want. So we just ran with it. And we're going to do it this summer. And my promise is that I will be reporting to you in a blog post about how this experiment went. So I'll be telling you what projects we did, what were the outcomes, the lessons we've learned, and the best practices. But also, if you're in the room and you're also in a position to give other people 20% time, I would strongly urge you to try it out, at least for the summer. My, <laughs> there's a woohoo here. Uh, the tw this, my second promise is this. This TEDx talk, this very TEDx talk, for me, was 20% time. So for years, I've been fascinated with this idea of 20% time at Google and how it works there, and also the potential of how it could work for individuals. So it's been cogitating in my mind, and I wanted to explore it. So I used this TEDx platform to do so. And if you, if you think back about what the definition I told you earlier of what a 20% project is, it's something that's not work. This is me in Battery Park in New York uh, reading an e-book to prepare for this talk during a work day. Uh, <laughs> um, second of all, um, it's something that you're interested in, and I just told you before, that's a check. And the last thing is that it's something that you're not really sure what the outcomes will be. And I definitely don't know what the outcomes will be for this talk. But if you're in the room and you want to connect, come talk to me. I'd love to meet you. And I also would love to say in five or 10 years that a few unexpected outcomes happened because I decided to use this 20% time to, to do this very TED talk that I have just did. I'd like to leave you on one single, simple, and a call to action. What will you do in your 20%? Thank you. <laughs>